Hello and welcome to Fratello Talks. I'm your host, Nacho. This week, I'm joined by my colleagues, Morgan and RJ. And we're going to be giving you the lowdown on Watches and Wonders 2024. We're going to be covering our experience, some uh, aspects of the show, a little bit the general mood, things that have changed, and also going through some uh, highlights uh, for ourselves and just in general from the show. But before we do that, let's do a little bit of a wrist check. Uh, RJ, what's on your wrist? Today I'm wearing the Omega Speedmaster Professional with a wide dial. Very Hello nice. Hello yeah. there. That's new. That's nice. Yeah. yeah. Very really cool like to see it in but person. Yeah. This is not your your own watch. No, it's a loaner for yeah, review. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yours yeah. will probably come if you like it. I hope it's yeah, yeah, I hope so. Not for sale, like Daniel Craig's. Not uh, for sale, no, Planet I Ocean. No. But the, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's a cool the not for sale version. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Really, really nice. That's Very really cool to cool. see it in person. Uh, Morgan, what's on your wrist? My beloved Tudor FXD on Very the blue nice. dial, the French uh, Marine National one. Cool. And that's not the OEM strap, right? No, that's no, a that's a um, CNS, uh, cheapest cool. NATO strap. Uh, NATO, yeah, like cool. And you sand. chopped, uh, you chopped away the uh, the extra, the extra bit. Always, always. Oh, okay. Not okay. pretty much, not always, but yeah, pretty much. Cool. Very nice. Uh, yeah, I'm wearing a watch that's uh, that's new to me. It's also a Tudor uh, Tudor FXD. That's oh, wow. the, the black the black version, the USN. Call it what you will. Uh, and I'm I'm currently wearing it on the uh, on the OEM strap. That's it's nice. a watch I've been after for for quite a bit of time. And then the opportunity came by to to call the one my own and uh, jumped on it. So and very happy to have it. I also saw something new. Is uh, the beard is gone. Oh yeah, but that was last week already. Yeah, I know. That was last week but already. But people was, don't uh, know that yet. I lost it in a shaving accident. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, perfect. So let's get uh, let's get into it. I, I Let's leave uh, Rolex and Tudor a little bit more towards the end, but mm -hmm. let's start with some... some uh, um, um, actually, in, in fact, before starting with highlights, let's take a look at, at what the show was like for us. Uh, you've been to Watches and Wonders before. You've yep. been to Watches and Wonders and many other fairs before. Mm -hmm. I've been to Watches and Wonders two years prior. Yep. Uh, what were some of the biggest differences that you guys felt from the show um, this year as compared to previous years? Uh, shall I start? Yeah, go yes. for it. Um, well, someone said uh, somewhere uh, it was watches and wonders and watches but no wonders this year. <laughs> <laughs> I feel a little bit the same. So in okay. overall, I felt it was a little bit flat or dull as you, uh, as you yeah. will. Mm. Of course, there are some, some exceptions. We will go into them uh, later on. But there was nothing that really excited me, which okay. I missed. Uh, every year there's at least something that, that excites me or that I want to like have. A re like yeah. a release that like you really see yourself buying. Or yeah, or exactly. Only, yeah. And uh, I didn't see that this year. Um, not unfortunately for, <laughs> for me, but I think in general it's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. It also resulted in uh, some brands and retailers uh, complaining a little bit that retailers were not really um, enthusiastic buyers. Let me put mm. it like that. Mm. So it was a bit slow. And brands are very afraid, because of that, brands are very afraid of uh, what will happen, especially also for 2025 next year. So it was very... Um, yeah, it, it, everyone was a bit uh, reluctant or... Careful, I would say. Yeah. Uh, that one was not the atmosphere for, for us, uh, watch uh, editors and, and photographers and uh, and so on on the show. I think it was well organized. There was a good dynamic. Yeah, always. I mean, yeah. Um, so it was well or, well organized by uh, Watches and Wonders. Uh, we had a nice press room. We could work properly. Yeah. Um, it was bigger than ever. So 54 brands, if I'm not mistaken. 54, yeah, that's right. It was like a, 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 a first floor now that I... Never so. I mean, yeah, there was. It used to be yeah. a restaurant, but yeah. now uh, they they open it up, so there are also yeah. more brands there. Yeah. One press room. We were a little bit sort of at the at the at the back end of the yeah. show, but I have to say, to be honest, it was nice. It was a little bit quieter. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a lot more space. You In, didn't struggle to find a place to sit true, down. Yeah. Yeah. Um, plenty of lockers to leave all the equipment and everything, which for for press is obviously uh, quite handy. Uh, yeah. If you want to leave your laptop and your camera gear at some point, if you're just walking around, it's uh, super useful. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I have to say, it was uh, over. Overall, sort of in general form was a was an improvement, yeah. uh, but I do agree that it was a little bit quieter. Yeah. Even on day one, it was a little bit quieter. It wasn't this in the this morning was very rush. slow. Yeah. Um, so that was a little bit uh, that was also interesting, and and that did seem to be. I spoke with a few people, and that did seem to be the general consensus yeah. that everything was a little bit. Um, not not underwhelming is not the right word, but just a little bit. There was less. a lot of care carefulness. Yeah. I feel it was a little less whelming. Yeah. <laughs> than before. Also, what I want to add is that in general. 
I think the prices uh, have become insane. And yeah, I'm not even yeah, talking yeah. about the 620k Lange und Söhne or... Uh, yeah, 600k uh, Piaget. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. But in general, for the, the normal watches, I think they went up yeah, so yeah, much. Yeah. Now, when, when you have like a 10k budget, you don't get that much no, it's, anymore. That's, that's, yeah. that's really very really a, a few years ago, we joked that 10k is the new 5k, but it feels mm. that now 15k is the new 10k. Yeah, that's yeah. for sure. Because now, yeah, pretty much all the brands yeah. are... Yeah. Uh, putting their watches at yeah. uh, around 10k or something like that, which is for me or maybe for you and maybe for a lot of people, kind of a step. Like, I mean, 10k is yeah, something to buy a watch. It's a big step. And I yeah. I do think there are also exceptions there. So uh, uh, Brimon was there, Nomos was there, mm -hmm. uh, uh, mm -hmm. Raymond Weil, yep. which I li very, liked very much, was there. Yeah. And they have, they have more friendly prices. But I think from the, the big brands that we know, I think only Tudor still operates in that uh, friendly uh, price uh, yeah, bracket. And and, still and went and up still, in price. Uh, but yeah, well. yeah, but not that much. And, and Tag Heuer is still uh, with their glass mm -hmm. box that is like six, six and a half K. Yeah, I think it's a good it's, deal. It's still okay. Yeah, this is a good deal. I think in general, it was yeah. really expensive. Other than that, there was uh, also uh, for, for brands that sort of stuck to that below 10 K price point. I think there was also uh, Norcane with a free, few of their, uh, uh, their, their new offerings. Yeah. Obviously the configurator models were quite expensive because yeah. they're all precious metal. Yeah, <laughs> which is oh, kind no, of nice. <laughs> it was kind of a, a, a funny thing to have uh, the the yeah. wild one with a with precious metal outer yeah. case and and still using this Nortec hard rubber sort of uh, uh, bumper thing um, um, within the movement, but then costing around sixteen thousand euros. But it was uh, yeah, that's uh, that's uh, that's also yeah. an, an interesting move. Yeah. Um, but I think yeah, other than that, all the all the other brands were well above and beyond five um, k and and yeah. definitely yeah. well above and beyond ten k yeah. in. in Majority yeah. of cases. So and, uh, that's not, good. Not that sure what I know. said, but I, I meant Nor no, so no more Snorkane and uh, Raymond Wild. Raymond and Raymond Wild. I think they yeah. were um, yeah. still on point with their prices and yeah, all the brands. It, it it has it becomes so yeah. But but much. that's uh, <laughs> that's that's good that I didn't know the Altiplano was six hundred k when I was shooting it. Ah okay. Because yeah. I dropped it twice. No 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. No you definitely didn't. I was there. I was uh, That's I true. was helping you out there. Yeah, uh, yeah so uh, it, but it's an interesting thing right. So for example with uh, with uh, um, um, Nomos we saw them uh, release 31 watches in many different colors. Mm -hmm. uh, all the uh, I, I always say Tetra but it's the Tangente model. Um, they and, even dropped in price. Yeah, a little they, bit. So those were, uh, yeah, I think, that, 100 that nice. 75 euros 75 less than euros the regular less. model. Yeah. And um, yeah, it was a, a, an interesting move, but but also kind of cool. I think everybody came out of the booth saying, okay, there's at least a handful that you would happily wear. Yeah. Um, and and nice that the price was a little bit lower, uh, kind of opening it up to, to collectors. Um, the other brand that mm -hmm. kind of uh, rolled back in price, um, but also by making a new introduction was uh, notably was Bremont. Um, which has now kind of left this uh, the way that I've understood it, right? Because there was there was some harsh criticism to the brand, um, but the way that I understood it is that uh, for a long time the brand was very much centered around producing watches for enthusiasts and 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 not very profitable. And at this point they've introduced a line parallel to all the things that we know and and quite like um, that, they were, that they will still. Produce. That they will continue to produce, yeah. of course. You still will have the triptych case. You'll still have the the MB models, uh, and then this kind of comes on top and and introduces a new a new line, right? So I think mm. change is always difficult in the watch industry. Um, I kind of understand why Bremont have done this. It's it's a it's a difficult move, but obviously it's trying to put the company in like a new direction. Um, yeah. Whether you like the watches or not, then that's you know at a at an individual level. Uh, personally, I still prefer some of the older models mm -hmm. like the 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 Supermarine S three hundred two, the GMT, yeah. and the and the the MB models. Um, the the new things were. They were okay. They felt very solid. They're 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 tool watches. They're supposed to be rugged, um, but at the same time, aesthetically, this calling back to pocket watches with the big loom numerals, it didn't do a lot for me. I feel yeah. like brands like Vertex are doing that kind of thing, but a lot better. So I think they changed too many uh, uh, parameters at once. Yeah. So they changed the watch, changed the dial, uh, the logo, whole setup, the, the logo. Font. I think the logo. Was yeah, a maybe big the mistake, logo to was a bit too much. But uh, in a way, yeah. If you want to go down in price, we already talked about it in the office uh, before. But you have to to have another collection, a new collection, yeah, because you, you can't you can't just be like, oh, yeah, this one used to cost three k, now it's two. Yeah. So yeah. what would people think? You know. Yeah, so sure. they really have to introduce a new uh, new collection. Yeah. yeah, but you could have introduced something nice. 
Yeah. So, but there were many brands <laughs> that introduced. Uh, there were many brands that did introduce nice things. Yeah. Uh, we can maybe go through some of our yeah. personal highlights from the fair. Morgan, what was the one thing or one? So you want one or several? For you? Because Give I have several. several. Give me several. Okay. But we'll take turns. Several. We'll take turns. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to start with Sharing one. Sharing is then, caring. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Of course. So I'm going to start with one. So yeah. for me, it was actually on day one of Watches and Wonders. I uh, had the opportunity to shoot uh, pretty much, maybe not all because it's always too much, but Cartier watches. Mm. Yes. I always loved their design because it's kind of, um, yeah, des design was, I don't <laughs> yes. know, but design was <laughs> is, is super nice. I mean, you can have the crash, you can have the Sentos, mm -hmm. you can, it's not the normal round watch mm -hmm. usually. Uh, I like the Monopoussoir, the Cartier Tortue Monopoussoir, mm -hmm. Monopusher for the English uh, speakers. Uh, yeah. And um, there was two versions, one in platinum and one in yellow gold, I think. Mm, yeah, yellow gold, yeah. yeah. I only managed to get hands-on with the platinum, but I think my favorite is still the gold one. And I think yeah, it's a I really, agree. really yeah. cool watch. Sure. It wears well on the wrist. It's not too big, not too small. It's not that thick. Obviously for a chronograph, it's a really good looking watch and really- And the movement- in the end, uh, it's nothing new. No, no, well, not. No, it's, it's, it's a reintroduction, it, of basically. Course, of course. Um, yeah, but like the 222. Yeah. Back then. Yeah, yeah, but that, that is but 40 years like in between, so, uh, between and not with the Totu. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No. Um, but yeah, I agree. I didn't like the Totu three hander that much. It I mean, was, the K shape is nice, but, but it with was three too hands, slim, maybe. Me. I don't know. There was something uh, yeah. too dull. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I no, I fully agree. That's a nice one. For me, the other nice Cartier one was the Santos Dumont in platinum mm -hmm. that runs backwards. Oh, yeah, that's cool. That's oh, really yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> actually, yeah, for, for those people who don't know about it, all the numerals are, yeah, backwards mm -hmm. on the yeah. dial and the time is displayed backwards. So exactly. I don't know if you can, you will be able to tell the time on the watch, but uh, it's you, pretty you have funky. An iPhone. I think if you got that yeah. watch, it's all good. You don't have to worry about yeah, it. Yeah, but this right? one was really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, nice. I, I actually, uh, one of my highlights from, from Cartier was a, uh, I believe it was a, Tank American in platinum with a new dial. The, with the brown uh, and uh, burgundy sort of kind of burgundy dial. Tone. Yeah, yeah, that was nice. I quite like that. Uh, like uh, that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it was good. It just, those the, with the curve, they always wear so well on the wrist. And uh, yeah, I really, uh, I, I like that one a lot. I thought the dial really worked. It was, mm -hmm. uh, it was a good one for sure. For sure, for sure. Cool. Um, RJ, give us some of your uh, some. I of your made highlights. some notes. I have a we'll lot of highlights you. still. Yeah, that does. Even work. though it was a little bit dull. Um, a brand that uh, it was not surprising because Morgan and I went to uh, to Chopard a few weeks uh, yeah. before. Um, so we went there and we saw the new LUC models. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the models that we didn't see when we visited uh, Fleurier and uh, uh, Chopard in Geneva mm -hmm. was the new LUC jumping hour. Yeah, I really I, like that with the black dial. Yeah, really, really the cool. jumping hour at six o'clock was really nicely done. But I also like the LUC with the green dial a lot. This is nice. The silver dial is also nice, but it reminded me too a little bit too much about the dog leg Lux from uh, the Omega Constellations, okay, which yeah. is not a bad thing. But I don't, uh, I, I associate it too much with Omega and then right. not with Chopin. Right, right. But the green dial one is really nice, and also the price was quite interesting. Expensive, of course. Uh, 11 it's a LUC model. It's yeah, exactly. So 11K uh, Swiss francs, but I think mm. you get a lot of watch for that money. Yeah, there, there's a lot going yeah. on, like well, uh, yeah. finishing with and yeah. stuff. It's really yeah. And with where all, pri all other prices are, then suddenly in contrast, it makes it seem like that's a lot yeah, of watch Yeah, to be honest, money. for a micro rotor uh, LUC model, chronometer, and um, I think it's a Poisson de Genève also mm -hmm. probably. Yes. Yeah, for 11K, you get quite a watch. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Super nice. I don't think that one is Poisson de Genève. I think it, it's the uh, one from 22K, the, ah, well, the oh, silver true. Yeah, the yeah, silver yeah, that's, that's that's a So no Poisson de Genève, but you save half the price. Yeah, you save half the price for the for the seal, yeah. So um, if I can mention another brand. Yeah, go ahead. I yeah. really, really enjoyed Parmigiani this year. Oh, yeah. the Tori collection? Yeah, the, the Tonda. Nice. It's very nice. <laughs> Tonda. <laughs> Tonda. But uh, the, um, the Toric, I really, really love that watch. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, sure. The price, uh, as it starts at 45K Swiss francs, I believe. The Chronograph Rata Prant is also very nice, that much higher nice. priced. But the nice. normal, uh, the, 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 the time thing. only one, yeah. I think it's a really cool watch. Beautiful dials. I like the, the bezel. The movement is made out of gold. It's, a, it's, it's, it's nice. stunning. I found it's a really good reintroduction of the Toric line. I took yeah. a picture of the of that, of that the PowerPoint slide where it was like, Case materials, only precious metal, movements made of gold. And I was like, this is like, this is like an RJ's manifesto yes. on how to make a watch. Yeah. I took a little picture. Yeah. And there's a, there's a power <laughs> reserve on the back, so you don't care. 
No, I love yeah. uh, if yeah. it's on the back. Then it's, that's okay. I don't mind. Yeah, I'm I'm really, yeah. I didn't know the collection actually. I only knew uh, the Tonda collection, obviously, yeah. Yeah. and I was really impressed by the Torek, to be honest. And now I like the Torek line more than the Tonda. It's really good looking, and it's yeah. the size is just. I, I mean, the sure. new Tonda is, uh, is also beautiful. Yeah, hey, of course, of course. Um, but yeah, the Torek did it for me yeah. this year. Yeah. The, the, the no date as well, the ton of no date. Yeah, that, beautiful. Was, that was really, really yeah. good. Yeah, with yeah. the coppery kind of yeah, dial. It's just yeah. like Super nice. the symmetry of it. It just works so yeah. well. It was, uh, yeah, really fantastic. We've skipped two things from the two brands that we've just covered, that you've just covered. And it's the skeletonized versions. Ah, uh, with the blue, blue skeletonized version, for the Tonda skeletonized version with the blue uh, yeah, kind of dial. Exactly, yeah. but also, also with, the with Chopard, there was the, the skeletonized uh, Alpine, Alpine Eagle. Eagle. Alpine Eagle. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm not, uh, as some people know, I'm not the biggest Alpine Eagle fan. Right. They had a gold version, a gold chronograph, which is quite thick, but it's nice. I like it. Mm -hmm. um, the skeletonized version is also nice. Uh, but it's in titanium, <clears throat> uh, so yeah, which is not for, yeah, yeah, of course. But yeah, yeah but I think they're nice additions to the collection. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't yeah. love the skeletonization on that one. I saw a few skeletonized watches yeah. that I that I enjoyed. Um, um, so I think they just opened up the dial a little bit, right? Yeah, There's exactly. It, it was sort of a, yeah. For, for me, though, uh, with the skeletonized watches that I enjoyed, I like the Moser Streamliner, the 40 millimeter. Okay. Moser is a brand that I don't, I, I don't, I there, I, there's nothing wrong with it, but it's just yeah. not my my thing usually. But I have to say that one was uh, was really impressive. I, I really liked it, and the forty millimeter size works super well for yeah. that watch. Okay, yeah. interesting for sure. And then another highlight for me has to be uh, um, um, I can't decide between uh, Laurent Ferrier or uh, Gégé Lecoultre, but I, let's go with Gégé Lecoultre. I thought that the new Duometre lineup was really impressive. Obviously, the prices there are just. Not even worth mentioning. It's uh, I think starting at forty eight thousand uh, four hundred you, for you, the um, talking about the blue one. Yes, exactly. The uh, I believe it's the Contième Lunaire yeah. uh, with the Seconde Foudroyante. So the second hand is uh, kind of flying around the the, the little subdial, which is uh, oh, really true, nice. True, it gives true, it this true. very uh, animated uh, look. That's but nice. I have to say that the the symmetry of that one and and just the the color worked super well. And they've done this uh, Savonette, uh, so inspired by pocket watches. Uh, um, a shape uh, uh, to the case and mm. it, it just it, it's so good yeah. so so good just make sure the warranty card is filled out absolutely absolutely yeah, and, and, and then of course yeah. their their sort of their their sort of uh, showpiece their sort of showstopper was the uh the uh the the one with the with the what is it the 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 tourbillon um um yeah i mean that was really impressive oh I yeah, yeah what yeah. it's called the uh the Duometre Helio Tourbillon. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. Really but impressive. It's, uh, again, it's 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 just hot horology uh, uh, showing off, right? It's uh, it's really incredible to see. Really, really amazing. Um, but yeah, don't ask about the price. Would that be a price point? Uh, I think it's all, all over fifty k, fifty k and more. Mm -hmm. Would that be a price point where Jeje Le Coulter is doing well? Because they, have so, they were so focused on on those high end watches this year. Yeah, well, last year they true. had the regular reversos, also a chronograph. Yeah, it was nice also. Yeah, yeah, but this year it's 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 so focused on yeah. hotel luxury on a high level. Yeah. But but I think they had that a, their uh, their strongest. Yeah, but they, they, point. they are not the watchmakers of watchmakers for nothing. So I guess yeah, well, that's true. But, I, but selling selling wise, that might also be why the the, the response uh, from 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 retailers that were there to buy was what it was. Right? They probably thought, ah, oh, maybe now is not the best moment for for these kinds yeah, of watches what, what, with the market mm, slumping a little bit. What, but what, th there was the Master Ultra Thin Perpetual as yeah, well. Or also ten no, k yeah. more than what it was f uh, four years ago. Yeah. Um, yeah. True. No. So my question is really: Is that the price point that still sells? So is the rest slowing down, but is everything over 30, 40, 50 K? Yeah, is right. Still so, doing so, well? so I mean, the, should, the in, yeah, yeah. It should very well be because also when you take a look at the normal um, uh, reverso, it went also up in price. So mm. might be the case for them. No, but it's more, it's more like people who have the money to spend between yeah. five and 15 K. That is maybe, so maybe, that might be slow, yeah, but is the yeah. price bracket above 30, 40, 50 K? Is that still yeah. a price bracket? Well, but it just sells because yeah. those people I, don't have pain. That's the thing. Yeah. That's for yeah. people. Yeah. That's, that's for awesome. people who have money where yeah. it doesn't matter, right? Like yeah. you, you have the house, you have the car, or yeah. five cars, and 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 you. So know. I wonder if it's really a conscious strategy by uh, yeah. Gégère to focus so much on. Uh, very expensive pieces. Yeah, that's an interesting. That's an interesting point, right? Sort of like yeah. like really aiming at the at the people buying the yeah. the highest highest end yeah. stuff because those guys don't care what goes on in the yeah. in the economy or in and the world. They're brands, still gonna. 
brands don't share this information, so we will never know. Basically. No, of course, of course, but, of course. Um, but it's an yeah. interesting. Yeah, it could be, could be a strategy yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah it could for be sure, for sure. Cool. More highlights. Uh, yeah, let, let me let me have some. I'm double checking the yes. name. Yes, yes, again. yes. So for me, another one. That's funny because I was also two two more of my favorite are from um, Laurent Ferrier and uh, yeah. JLC. Yeah, yeah. So I will go with the Laurent Ferrier then. Yes, uh, it's the classic moon, the new one. Yeah. I think it's super, yeah, it's super nice. I would also uh, choose the gold version. Oh, okay. I was, I was about to dial. ask. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's just nice. From yeah. the pictures in the first place, I was like, will it be too big? Will it be too thick? And mm. in the end, mm. no. In the end, it's just really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just like, wears well on the Size wrist. wise, it was really good. It's, yeah, and yeah. I, I love Movement the design stunning. of these watches yeah. anyway. Yeah. It's it's super nice. And um, yeah. yeah, talking about JLC, maybe I can tell, uh, say one more. Yeah, 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 for sure. Uh, so first, that was my favorite touch and feel session. Okay. JLC, I Just think sure. it was really interesting. Maybe more leaning towards the watch nerd part of things because mm. it was more talking about mm. movement parts yeah. and but it was really interesting. Yeah. You saw that the people you were talking to knew what they were saying and yeah. that was really nice yeah. for, for us watch enthusiasts, I'd say. And uh, yeah, the Duomètre, uh, the Duomètre, but the Joker face one, I don't exactly know that. I'm not sure what it's called. But yeah, but the, 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 the it has dial. like a, yeah, with the salmon dial. This one was really impressive too. Really, sure. really impressive. Yeah. So. No, but I do agree. It, thinking back, it is. It was one of the better touch and feels, and yeah. and the the. Sometimes you have these uh, brands that are super high end. They play the video and the frame frame skip and the and the frame rate drops, yeah. and you're a little bit like, guys, come on, it's it's just playing yeah. a video, and everything was super smooth. And then the people that were there to present the product really were able to tell you. Everything, everything, yeah. everything, 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 which is, uh, yeah, not something you can take for granted, right? I mean, every brand should be doing this, but, uh, but sometimes it's uh, not so much the case, but, yeah. Uh, but yeah, shout out to those guys. Yeah, Definitely really nice. did I didn't experience job. any negative presentations. I have to say most no, brands knew no. what was up. So yeah, well, good. I had some, but yeah, yeah. Well, photo shoots or presentations? Both because Both. it was okay. it was the same at the same time, which yeah. is also uh, part of that's it maybe, being uh, not great. That's maybe because then you find yourself in a freestyle format, right? Where yeah. it's like neither a presentation nor a photo shoot. But, uh, um, but anyway, RJ, what's your next yeah, highlight? Um, yeah, I still have a few. I like Grand Seiko. Yep. Seiko, I have to say, otherwise we get a lot of comments about Seiko. Seiko. That's how we pronounce it in the Netherlands. Yeah. Grand Seiko. Um, the handhold calibers, I really like. It's nice. Mm -hmm. I'm not a fan of titanium, but they also do one in rose gold. Yeah. Um, almost 50K, I think, in price. But the mm -hmm. titanium one is 11 point something. Yeah, with the hand one movement, right? Yeah, yeah. The 9S A4 yeah. um, sits really well on the wrist. Yeah. It's really thin. Yeah. So that's, I think, a, a nice uh, nice new release. I also like the Chronograph with the red dial. Oh, wow. Oh, I, the, uh, I the, felt the this the one lion. was really Yeah, the lion. Easy. I yeah. really like the dial. It's okay. really, really awesome. I, the it's light. too busy for me. Yeah, no, it's I like too the, much the, the way the color changes and there's different angles. I think it's really uh, nicely done. I like the, the bracelet design a lot, but not the clasp. They still have that weird mm. extension system. Oh, that yeah. So yeah, 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 yeah. And okay. it's really they, huge also. Yeah, but it's, it's a diver's, super huge. Yeah, but it's a diver's watch, yeah. and so you need to wear it over your uh, suit and so on. What, what well, it's not really a diver's watch, but it's a big sports watch. Yeah, that's true. It's it's chunky, but at least because yeah. the case shape is a yeah. little bit uh, non-traditional, yeah. it, it sort of it can work. Yeah. Uh, what do you think of the new uh, Kodo? The Kodo Two. Yes. Yeah, uh, beautiful. I uh, think it's, it's a beautiful piece. They will only make twenty, and it will come out in December, and the price is three eighty five k in euros. Okay. Yeah, that's not too <laughs> far from the uh, not too far from the original, right? No, it was also three something. Yeah, it's also uh, yeah. beautiful watch. I think it's really. Uh, is it better? Is the sequel better than the than the original? In this case, this one so. is a bit more. Adds a little bit more transparency towards the movement. It's lighter, like the color also. Yeah, the other yeah. one was kind of very dark, dark, and it had the yeah. gems were still purple, like yeah. the, and, and this one is very silvery. Yeah, and it, it sort of brings a lot of light into the exactly. movement. Exactly, it shows a lot of a lot more detail. Yeah, mm. I for prefer me, the was, second uh, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me too. So I prefer me too. The, me too. the Kodo two. Yeah. Um, Kudos to the Kodo. Kudos to the Kodo. I don't think uh, we'll ever see it uh, somewhere in the wild. Nope. Wow. Um, in the past, I've seen the first Kodo uh, twice in a boutique somewhere okay. in Seiko. Okay. Oh, wow. And um, okay. yeah, I, I, it's, I think it was a stunning watch. Really okay. uh, cool. beautiful. Cool, cool, cool. Then um, 
and Grand Seiko showed me something that they will release later on this year, which will be very nice. It has a beautiful, oh, beautiful dial. One. So stay tuned. Very nice. <laughs> um, I also want to talk about Patek. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, all their watches are now rated 30 meters, including the Aquanaut mm -hmm. that used to be rated 120 meters. That doesn't mean that the watch uh, changed. So the construction is still the same. It is still what resistant to 120 meters. But for the sake of uh, simplicity, mm -hmm. <laughs> Patek decided to rate all their watches 30 meters. Meaning you can uh, wash your hands, you can swim, you can shower. They also told me you can even dive with them to 30 meters. I'm not sure if that's entirely, but that hey, they said it. That doesn't sound right. No, but, but mm, I okay. think... It's also a statement. So people are complaining about it or wondering, perhaps that's mm. the better word. Mm. And this was their answer. So there's no further explanation from them. Mm. Um, but I also feel they did it because I think they're fed up with all the, the people that are too much into specifications. And I yeah. also believe that the Patek buyer does not care about those specifications anyway. Mm -hmm. If they have the, the, the guarantee that you can swim with your Aquanaut, it's fine. They don't care. Yeah, I don't really they understand They don't look why at, the, at the specs. I mean, if, if the watch is... The, so the construction hasn't changed it's at all. the same watch, different dial. Same watch, but I don't know why you would not say, okay, you can go like I had a hundred. If you can do it with the watch. Because they said, they told what they actually told me is, we got so many questions about 120 meters. What does that mean? Mm. Oh, that watch is 30 meters. What does that mean? That's 100 meters. What does that mean? I said, no, everything is 30 meters. You can swim, right. dive, shower, wash your hands with it. Period. Okay. Just well, yeah. yeah, it is what it is, and I, and I, I think it's just the Patek buyer doesn't care. Yeah, that's probably yeah. true. Fair Only uh, I think the, the the watch nerds care. That might also be Patek buyers, mm. the enthusiasts. Yeah, the enthusiasts. But I, I think it. Yeah. I know you don't you don't dive with your watches, RJ. No, I, I, oh, okay. I swim with a watch and last uh, two years ago, I made a joke with my pro prof that I went 70 <laughs> centimeters underwater. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, I think that's what it is. I don't see people right. diving 50 meters with their Patek Nautilus anyway. But yeah, what true. did we think of the watches themselves? The new oh yeah, so that's the next point. <laughs> um, I really like them. I see people complaining and bitching about mm -hmm. it. Oh, denim strap, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think it's nice, it's fresh. And if that is what bothering you, change the strap because exactly. it's just a strap. Yeah. It's and a calf leather strap, so it's not denim. It's a calf leather with the motif of denim and a color. Yeah. Um, I like the world time a lot. Really it's, a the lot. Colors, I, the colors are really beautiful. Really yeah. beautiful, but I also like the, the, really nice. the mechanism of the date that it will, yeah. date will go backwards as soon as you change the, the, the point near Hawaii, I think, yeah. where the date will uh, go back. I think that's a fun mechanism. I think it's really, it's uh, really well cool. done. It's clever. Um, but what I really liked about um, Patek and my colleague, our colleague Lauritz will uh, uh, agree, is the why. ellipse yeah. <laughs> with oh, the gold bracelet. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's so nicely done. That's really cool. Beautiful. It's really... Uh, yeah, yeah, I saw that lovely. one also. It was, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I liked there Patek. was, I, I believe it was new, it was a, a sort of salmon dialed, uh, I don't know, if I think it was an annual calendar, mm -hmm. something like this. That was also pretty uh, pretty neat. Uh, we, we, I don't think that we that we shot it, but it I was, uh, so. but there was a picture of it on the wall in the, in the yeah. when we were doing the photo shoot. Okay. It was really, uh, really yeah, quite a nice I've one. I've seen all the, so they have a presentation uh, mm -hmm. aside from the photo shoot, where they have all the watches and you have to right. walk around this table with all the, the I think we representatives are the same, of Patek. Uh, the same uh, yeah. room. And then you have all explanations and talk, but I didn't stop at that one indeed. Right, but, right, uh, right. The ellipse and the world time was really inter interesting. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the, the, yeah, the new Aquanaut, I think it's uh, yeah. also a nice, uh, interesting piece. What they didn't show at the uh, fair and Watches and Wonders, but what mm -hmm. they showed on Wednesday evening during a, a Patek Philippe cocktail at their salon in the mm -hmm. Rue du Rhone mm -hmm. is the, um, the new Mark Tree watches. Oh, okay. right. Like yeah. beautifully yeah. surfer. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, with the surfer. Ah, I think it's uh, nice. really a, a piece of art. And um, there was a demonstration done by the, the, the man that did the marketry. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting nice. to see. Yeah. It's really nice. We saw that at Chopin also when we went. Yeah, it's, it's really super cool. nice. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Cool. Yeah. Very, very nice. Uh, yeah, for me, another highlight when I look down here at my list, uh, I can see, uh, yeah, of course, Lange. Um, Lumen, that's, that's kind of a given. That was yeah. a, a much more of a highlight for me than the than the uh, up down. 
Um, mm-hmm. Up auf. Up auf. Up auf. Um, also, I, it, that was just blue. So that was, that just that didn't feel like anything too new. I prefer it in black, actually. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that was kind of, it's, I, it's nice, right? To have something different. It's yeah. another option in the catalog. Good for them. The loom uh, is really impressive. But that, yeah, that it's was nice. really, I, yeah, it, it, seeing it in person, it's truly, a, truly a beautiful thing. And I like the honey gold because the honey gold, it's, it's huh? a little bit more subtle. It's a little yeah. bit more, you almost think it's reflecting the, yeah. the natural light around yeah. you and it's, it's a, it's, a no, white it's metal, but nice it's, one. But it's really nice. Oh, yeah. Really I, uh, I love it as well. It's really cool. The and uh, I mean, the movement is always yeah, that, that, for me, that's the thing with Lange, the movements. It's yeah. like a, a beautiful six, architecture. Yeah, yeah. 600K though, again. Yeah, Which even is, more, um, 620, I yes, believe. Yeah, true, and so. then uh, 30 pieces only. Yeah. It's 30 lucky nice. people. Yeah, it's for the ballers. Able to buy one for the ballers, the German ballers. <laughs> Perfect. Um, yeah, so that was obviously uh, obviously worth a mention. Uh, and then I also have to say uh, Zenith. I, I quite like yeah. the uh, the Defy Extreme Diver. Yes, that's my favorite as well. I thought that was just a little bit. I I, I didn't, didn't like say it anything. in the press pictures. No, 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 no. Me neither. First, me but neither. in the flesh, super cool watch. For sure. And that strap was that. nice. The, the yeah. sort of it looked like a textile strap, almost like a sailcloth kind of thing. But it was really soft. Really kind of yeah, Cordura. But 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 it was very flexible. So it was more like a textured rubber. But but really really nice. Yeah, um, I liked it obviously well. the Defy uh, chronograph that mm-hmm. just felt like something that was just, yeah, it made sense. So yeah. there it is, yeah. right? Very nice, but but not, not that special. There it Boom, is. There it is. And uh, and the Defy the the revival the, thing. The revival thing. That, yeah. I, I kind of like that. It's a funky orange nice. diver. Um, it's a little bit too small for me, but I, I can yeah. see uh, why you like it. Yeah. And uh, they keep it true done. to the original, right? Yeah. Which no, is the, nice. the, quali- so. the quality of the watches is really nice, even yeah. under macro, because yeah. I come really really uh, yeah. close to the watches, so yeah. I know <laughs> when yeah. it's yeah, yeah, done yeah. well. Oh, yeah. for sure. So the quality is super nice. Yeah. Yeah. But about the design, I'm not too too much of a fan of these. But that's my personal. Take, it's so not a crowd pleasing design. No. The crowd no, is, is, the, is the chronograph. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Extreme. Cool. I think they did a did a great job for sure. What's another uh, highlight from you, Morgan? Vacheron. Uh, shall yeah. Shall, shall we talk about uh, Tudor or Rolex now? Already? No, that's so no we got a couple. Things. Okay, yeah. so I saw Vacheron. I I shot the three mm-hmm. uh, gold uh, rose gold with the green dial. Mm-hmm. So overseas. overseas, so you have yeah. the chronograph version, the th- the three hand version, and the war- yeah. not world timer, but the duo dual time. I don't know how yeah, dual time. Dual time. Dual yeah. time. Yeah. Uh, these are cool. Yeah. These are really cool, yeah. and I think that the rose gold and that shade of green works really well yeah. together. Really nicely done. Yeah. I mean, Cactus it wears green. well on the wrist. It's just a good oversee. Yeah. It I was a little well. bit uh, tired of green, to be honest. Yeah, there, there was, was a lot of green. a lot of green. This, uh, but this, this is show. this was a good looking yeah. green. Yeah. 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 And of course they did this uh, 63 complication uh ah, the, the, the pocket, pocket watch. Po- it's it's a pocket yeah, watch. That's that a table you, uh, watch. Yeah, table watch exactly. It's the size of a grapefruit. Uh, yeah, that's pretty it's, big. It, it's unbelievable. But hey, again another very 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 technical achievement uh, and very impressive technical achievement. And also so, the titanium cool. overseas with the tourbillon. tourbillon that was yeah. beautiful. This was nice. Yeah. 42.5 mm. Yeah. Yeah. Super really nicely nice. done. Yep. Yeah. And then there was the platinum, platinum, platinum. Uh, everything is platinum. Uh, Mono Poussoir, again. That okay. was, uh, it was, it was impressive, but a little bit less, um, sort of remarkable. It's, yeah. it's cool, but, uh, yeah, I think from, from Vacheron, still the overseas take the, take the prize for sure. Yeah. yeah. For sure. Uh, what did we think about Tag Heuer? Um, well, okay. It starts <laughs> well. <laughs> it starts well. I saw four watches and I think two are nice and two are not. Oh, you two, saw two, two more than I did. Yeah, the two I like <laughs> are the skipper in mm-hmm. gold. Mm-hmm. I think it's really nicely done, well executed. Price is, I think, just above 20K, but I feel for gold chronograph, that's okay-ish. Mm. And the the glass box, the silver panda. Mm-hmm. I think it was a nice addition on a bracelet. Yeah. Really cool bracelet, the bracelet tapers. And you can have that taper on the regular glass box also, yeah, I think. Yeah, six and a half oh, okay. K. I think it's a very... Nice watch for yeah. for the for that price. Nothing wrong with it. Expanding no. the range. Yeah, I, I do have to say that I expected because last year was the introduction of those models. Um, yeah. I believe that I don't see them that much in the flesh. I expected to see more, but I hardly mm-hmm. see mm-hmm. them uh, in the flesh. Yeah, true. The glass box. Yeah. yeah, you don't see it around a lot. Yeah, it's yeah. a bit of a. Yeah, I don't know. Because you know. think for the price and what you get that people would really yeah. be jumping on it. But yeah. uh, hey, I mean, you yeah. Know. But I, I, I like that model, those two models, Skipper mm-hmm. in the glass box. Um, I think the Monaco was interesting, but not 135K interesting. Okay. 
for me that was completely out of whack. Yeah. I didn't price. see it in the metal, so yeah, me neither. Yeah. But, yeah. And uh, then it's the new Carrera at 36 millimeters with the lab grown diamonds. Mm -hmm. They had those Carreras last year as well, the three handers, mm -hmm. and I feel it's not. I don't feel it's it's. It's so substantial. Dope. It feels a bit yeah. cheap, to be honest. Okay. It's kind of filling a gap and and sort of offering something at a sort of an entry level for the yeah. brand that people can just. I buy. feel so. It's to fill the catalog, and perhaps they sell like uh, hotcakes. I don't know if mm. if that's their bread and butter pieces, mm. but I'm not so not so keen on them. Okay. Um, so I think Tagoya has seen stronger uh, stronger years in terms of introductions. Last year, definitely. Last year was yeah, good. Last year was really nice. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I like the skipper best. I have to say, okay. from all the watches okay. uh, I, I've seen from them. <laughs> Um, then uh, next door was Zenith, and then the next next door mm -hmm. was uh, Hublot. Okay, yeah, I didn't um, get to see those, but uh, I like the stuff that they were doing, including there was a I never know the name the Big Bang with the pink sapphire. I think it was kind of kind of cool. I like the old transparent one. Yeah, mean? that, yeah, that, that was, I like uh, that. In, that was impressive. Yeah, it was an impressive watch. Don't drop it, but it was impressive. No, I think it was an impressive watch. But um, they also made the uh, Hublot, I think, classic fusion in thirty eight. The one that in gold and uh, titanium, you mean? No, there was yeah, there was steel. I saw a ceramic. I think I saw mm -hmm. one in gold. So they had different uh, different models, mm -hmm. but they had the, the, the Arabic uh, numerals on yeah. the dial, and it reminded me a little bit. You you guys are too young for this. I yeah. think it was ninety two, but I'm not sure. Well, then, was the yeah. AP Royal Oak Nick Faldo edition? Is it the one with the Royal Oak writing on the dial and the numbers? And the numbers, yeah. yeah so it reminded nice. me of those. Uh, okay. Yeah, a little bit. Um, a little bit. And I like I like those back in the day. Yeah, and right. I so I like these uh, these uh, these uh, new Hublots as well. Yeah. Thirty eight. I think it's a nice size for men and women. What, do you know what the price and was? Everything on those? in between. No idea. I don't okay. know. Okay. No if you have to ask. Okay. Uh, so two more brands that I think we can get to before we jump into Tudor and uh, Rolex. Um, we also, in that neck of the woods, there was also Oris, yep. uh, yeah. who basically sort of shaved down the uh, Aquis a little bit. It was a case update. Um, there the were some differences on the, on, the, yeah, on the bracelet, which got a, a little quick adjust system. Very clever. Um, the, the markers were also a, a little bit different in some of the models. Uh, and the dial was a little bit revamped with a matching, uh, matching date window. I thought that especially the trimming down the case um, so that it doesn't just slant downwards, but then it has a little bit of a chamfering in. Um, it was really clever. It really changes how the watch feels and wears yep. on the wrist. It sort of removes a bit of the perceived thickness. Yep. And um, yeah, it just, it, it was really a, quite quite a nice one. Yep. Um, the only thing is like you have the Salida models, which don't have the quick adjust yeah. or the quick release on yep. the bracelet, yep. um, but you still get that new uh, revamped K shape, but cool that they maintain the Salida models at a sort of yeah, a reasonable always, price. Yeah. And then if you want, you have the uh, the uh, the caliber four hundred uh, stuff with the uh, with the and, and that's three point nine k, I guess, right? Yes, I I like them. Um, the Akis is there. Uh, I think they're bread and butter mm -hmm. yeah. at uh, Oris, um, at least in our market. Mm -hmm. And I really like their redesign. I think it, yeah, uh, it is works. A, was a well received uh, update. But yeah, but because works. I also noticed on um, yeah, the comments on, were... on the interwebs that uh, mm -hmm. people, oh, what's the difference? This is ridiculous, yada yada yada. But I think they made very small yeah. incremental improvements. Uh, That's which what is really Rolex cool. would do. That's what Rolex always does. Yeah. And uh, now Oris does it. Um, yeah, I think it's very clever. Nicely done. Yep, I agree. And 100%. then the other brand is, uh, well, it's two brands in one, but it's Frederic Consan uh, and Alpina. Yeah, Frederic nice. Consan had a sort of, I think they call it the classic manufacturer moon phase, um, which was quite nice. It's, it, it's a Frederic Consan that looks like a Frederic Consan and it, it wears well, it looks good, and it's it's reasonably priced. Uh, I think that there's nothing wrong with the with their releases this oh, year. That's nice. Um, and just yeah, really uh, like good stuff, you know. And they it's, came also up with the GMT from Alpina. Yeah, and I uh, like that the the smaller. Yeah, it's a the, smaller the, the, uh, Alpina. Yeah. It wears Alpina super well Extreme. on the wrist. Yeah, on the rubber strap, and mm -hmm. it's smaller compared to the regular um, Alpina diver watches, mm -hmm. which is yeah. a little bit big. Yeah, mm -hmm. this one. Goes really well on the wrist. It's right. like 39 millimeters and it's so. not too thick. Yeah. So it's nice. And I think but, it's. And the uh, diver was also sized down. Yeah. And there's also, also the diver in 39, yeah. also. Yeah. yeah. Which also works really well because I believe the uh, previously it was maybe 41, 42, 43. Yeah. And it was just a little bit too big, that Alpiner Extreme. But now it's, uh, it's, it works better in this, uh, in yeah. this case size, at least for, for me personally. And the, yeah, the GMT was yeah, really yeah, cool. I think with it's a, better. With a whitish silvery dial. I thought that was. Uh, yeah, for the price, you get, really a, nice. you get a, you get a nice watch. I mean, yeah. it's you very like solid. the design or not, that this is another question. Yeah. 
Quality wise, it's super nice. Definitely. Okay. Perfect. Tudor and Rolex. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's start with. Uh, yeah. Let, let me let me kick off a little bit. Um, yes. I felt that this year in general that Tudor took the stage. Yeah, of course. And Rolex stepped yeah. a little bit back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what I also heard through the grapevine <laughs> is, uh, and that's also uh, an extension of what I said earlier about uh, the market, is that uh, Rolex. Uh, the rumor is that Rolex will decrease its production by a little bit. Mm. So there's also an interesting yeah. decrease. Uh, yeah, decrease. Okay, an interesting not, message. Uh, supposed to be like that. Um, but at least they are scalable, so that's good. If that's the case, um, I think Tudor did well. Tudor is not for me in general, but um, that has nothing to do with uh, with the quality or the watches as such. Yeah, I explained it before in another podcast. I think I grew up with the five digit Rolexes, and that's exactly what Tudor, in my opinion, did this year. They created new tutors that are so inspired on these five digit Rolexes yeah. from the past. And I think that's a super, super clever thing because um, I grew up with those five digit Rolexes. I think there's a young generation now that's that sees their, their older brothers or fathers or uncles, whatever, with those five digit Rolexes. Yeah. A new Rolex would be out of, out of range for them or not available, both. <laughs> so I think these are a perfect... Uh, not even alternative, but a perfect solution for that. And Metas also on top of yeah, that. Yeah, but I, I saw the, I saw the, but I don't think that's a selling point to be honest, but I, I saw the GMT uh, Black Bay. I said, man, that's the GMT 6710 I used to have in yeah. the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. And um, it's really well done. For me, the the little rings, they should not have done it. Which ring you mean? The rings around the hour markers, the, 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 what is it? The, Oh, guilt. The, the guilt, the, the golden uh, accent. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I would yeah. not have done that. Right. I can like it. Um, and if they did not have do that, it would be even more the vintage GMT Master style. Yeah. Um, I think, I think, although we'll it looked a little uh, bit like a, a 6542 GMT yeah. Master. Mm. We'll see iterations, I think. I think yeah, that, that, I guess that'll so. be because obviously new movement slims down by almost, I think, 1.9 yeah. millimeters, which is that's that's really nice that's because Tudor really listened to what people were yeah. saying. I mean, we weren't the only ones saying, oh, the GMTs are a little bit thick, the Black Bay Pro is a course. little bit thick. And, and so I think that that it's really nice that they listen yeah. and that they pulled that off in, in, I yeah. mean, obviously having Kinesi as their, their manufacturer, they can work rather quickly. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a, it's a hell of a manufacturer. It's a hell of a, a resource to have. So they were able to turn that around pretty quick yeah. um, in a couple of Super years. Nice. Yeah. And I think that it's an exciting thing because it's, it's a great movement. It's a flyer GMT yeah. meta well, certified and um, you know, it's probably well, great as in it's a, it's a workhorse reliable yeah. movement. Well, you, you prove my and, point uh, is for your, <laughs> your generation. Yeah, I think true, it's a very true. nice, no, but that's, that's uh, nice sure. piece. And the, the, the Black Bay 41 is also an interesting watch and yeah. it's a Tudor like sub. That I one. prefer it over the current Submariner. Even. I mean, you told me, I, I, yeah. I did a post yesterday on yeah, my Instagram. I think it's, it's yeah, uh, nice. It, it looks like that. a, I, th I don't know, 6536 uh, or mm -hmm. 5508 with the yeah. big crown, no crown guards. It, it lets, Super nice. It lets people like me and and perhaps Morgan and other other people in sort of our, our wheelhouse uh, buy a, a five digit uh, Rolex sub yeah. looking watch with with a legitimate claim of being part of the group yeah. um, without yeah. having to pay 10 or 12K for it. Because that's the thing, 10 or 12K is like completely- What brilliant. I found, what I found well. funny it is that well. the, the, the prices of the new tutors is the same as what I used to pay for those Rolexes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think, the, I think the quality is also pretty similar. I think it's better. I think the new oh, tutors better are better than the five digit, than the, yeah. the five so digit Rolex. In, 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 in I think it's a really fair- and You get tools, micro adjust, you get a yeah. lot of things. Yeah, yeah. definitely. That's Very interesting. So, and then if I jump to Rolex and then you can jump on- And I think then we'll wrap up because we've got a- I liked Rolex a lot. What I didn't like was the GMT Master. I saw we got a lot of yeah, the traffic the on the GMT Master, but I felt it's the 2007 GMT Master with with a new bezel. Um, pff, yeah, yeah, it was not really um, fantastic. And I feel that if I, what I like best at Rolex was this 36 millimeter dated with a white dial. Uh, with the Roman numerals on it? Yeah, there was only one. Yeah, then I feel nice. it, that's a little bit of a issue that it's it's it appears that it's not that exciting for rolex this year yeah. i think the weird one of course was the deep sea miss it was there was no sea dweller on the dial or back mm. it's only deep sea oh, in yeah. full gold and i think it's a bit silly to have uh, a diving watch in gold but people don't dive with it anyway so it's a show-off piece or statement mm. piece but i think it was really well executed and it even sat nice on my wrist i have to say mm -hmm. um sky dwellers I'm not a big Sky Dweller fan, but no. I think the Jubilee in gold is something really nice. Or the white dial yeah. also. It's really well done. <clears throat> they, 
They yeah, were, yeah but uh, there was a white already, I think. But I think the Jubilee in gold is something special. Special. It, it looks sure. nice. It feels nice. Mm. Yeah, it has that weight to it, but yeah. at the same time, it's very solid and, yeah. and but comfortable. It's yeah. it's yeah. So it was a, a lot of gold at Rolex, and yeah. the one that we did not see because they didn't they didn't want to show to press. Oh yeah, but they um, did. But we'll we will see it later on. Okay. Is the the new uh, Daytona uh, Le Mans <laughs> in gold? In gold. Yeah. They discontinued uh, the previous one in white gold, mm -hmm. and now they have this yellow gold one. But there was no communication whatsoever on it. No, no, yeah. yeah. But well, I like that one. It's nice. Did you, you also? Did, I don't. I'm sorry. I don't know if you mentioned it, but the deep sea and uh, yeah, I was talking about. Yeah, that's that's. Yeah, yeah. I thought. I thought so. Uh, some of the people had a bit of a problem with it, but I, I think that to be honest, it's such a just wild and out there watch, and it's it's yeah, it doesn't it doesn't have to make sense. Yeah. Already a dive like a Rolex Submariner in gold has never made mm -hmm. sense, mm -hmm. but somehow it's never not been an incredibly cool thing. No. Oh. Like a yellow gold uh, Rolex sub with a no. uh, with black. Yeah. It's just it's oh, okay. so special. But um, and this is just fun. Just, and then uh, you know, let it be if it's yeah. not for you. Carry on. But it's cool. And also not for me, but perhaps the highlight for Rolex. I prefer the day date. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> it's the nineteen oh eight. Yeah, with the Guilloche dial. Yeah, yeah. There That's was a cool I, line. I asked uh, because there was some some misunderstanding. I saw also on my Instagram feed. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Guilloche dial. It's not done by hand, so it's not like Breguet. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. like stamped. But it, it, it it's carved. So it's not stamped, okay. right? It's still okay. carved, uh, but not by hand. Uh, so it's a, more or less the same kind of equipment, but um, done by dr machine. driven by uh, by a machine and oh, not okay. someone who turns the wheel. I like to watch. I think the price is not that crazy, just over thirty k for a platinum Rolex. I've seen worse. Oh yeah, um, yeah, true. So Rolex was a little just, bit slow, it works but I, well, the size is good. Yeah, but I really feel that they gave the stage to Tudor this year. Yeah. Oh, it was. Not, yeah. I mean, yeah, Tudor. I can't wait to see what they come uh, mm -hmm. going to come up with because if you don't like that guilty uh, mm -hmm. GMT color uh, that yeah. they they came up with yeah. this year, you can dress the they shirt will probably will put come. different dials yeah, on it, like they maybe a more yeah, black, yeah. like more standard yeah. blue okay. or whatever. So I think it's nice. Perfect. To wrap up, yes, our highlight of the disappointment. Week. Oh, disappointment! Oh, disappointment of the fair. A disappointment. No blue M and M's. No blue M and M's at show par. Shall I? Uh... Yeah, you start with a disappointment. Panerai. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. I man, that was cringy. It was all Luna Rosa models. Yeah, GMT. It, it feels like you're uh, you're yeah. um, you have a, like a advertising campaign on the wrist. Yeah, yeah. with the, with the strap and the region, I don't know what yeah. they do. Prada, they have all these collapse, and yeah. this Luna Rosso thing was yeah. just too much. But Omega also does America's Cup, but it's one model that they release in the summer, and that's it. And yeah. and Tudor also did it, and same thing during the summer. Yeah, but you can introduce these things during the summer or whenever. But yeah. if you have a watch, it's, it's a the wonder show, focus of, and the only thing you introduce yeah. are Luna Rosso models. Yeah. I think it's a bit strange. Yeah. I feel that Panerai is further away from what they used to be than ever, yeah. and it's a pity. Because I yeah. like the brand, I like yeah, the, the submersible. Is, uh, yeah, I like yeah. the submersible. favorite of mine, yeah. but not in this uh, this uh, configuration. Constellation. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. no, yeah, for sure. Well, we'll see what they do for the rest of the year. Uh, there might be some some more interesting yeah. stuff coming. So it could be could be they might be yeah. able to redeem themselves somewhat. And so we'll see. Anything that uh, is was not a watches and wonders because there were over two hundred mm -hmm. brands exhibiting in the city yes i have only been to one and it yes. was also one of my f absolute yeah. favorites me too the singer dive track oh, oh yeah so beautiful that watch is, that thing that is proper diver unbelievable that's a real tool watch that is how the pro prof today should be exactly yeah. Yeah. it's really so cool it has, Omega, all, the, it has all the vibes no but it's too pro. high end for yeah, me yeah, 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 it's 80 80 000 euros but yeah. still like amazing yeah, so good, stunning, really, really oh, design wise, everything wise, just just a yeah. really, really, yeah. really impressive watch. Yeah, I think that was that was my highlight from the show. I loved seeing the new Doxas. I'm mm -hmm. still not sure if they're <laughs> if they. I kind of prefer the full size one. Uh, yeah, but still, I don't know but, because uh, when you put the small one on the wrist, you're like, ah, it's a little bit too small. And then you put the the regular one on the wrist, you're like, the other one was not too bad actually. <laughs> yeah, so you don't exactly. really know. Yeah, so I'm still weird. I'm still a little bit. Uh, the verdict's still out on that one, but mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yeah. And I think uh, biggest disappointment was not being able to to handle the the yellow gold uh, tortues. Yeah, uh, I think that yeah. that that those would have potentially been one of the best from from the releases at the fair. Mm -hmm. um, I agree. But uh, yeah, I think that's it. But and I saw some people manage to get hands on with 
and put the watches on the yeah, wrist. Yeah, I think they opened the, end of the, the fair. they opened the vitrine at the end of the fair. Yeah, and so like we were gone but, uh, already. Yeah. No, Thank but you, it was, Cartier. Uh, it was a great uh, it was a great show, and it was uh, nice to see all all of our friends and colleagues that we only get to see yeah, in many cases true. only once a year. So it was uh, no, it was a good show. Yeah, uh, a little bit uh, lower pace, a little bit quieter, still a, a lot of content. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so I would say to everybody to stay tuned to the website for uh, some upcoming hands on reviews. We'll do a very quick uh, comment of the week from last week, which goes to Justin Galore one two three, who said uh, it was about gifting watches, right? So oh. he said I got my fiance a vintage Cartier Panther as an engagement gift with a small engraving on the back. Luckily, it went down well and it never, never leaves her wrist. Very nice. That's a gift done nice. well. And yep. he clearly must have followed our advice. Or, well, it probably happened well before the podcast. I, I guess so. But he but he got it. He got it. <laughs> Very so, good. All good. Fantastic. Well, thanks a lot, guys. Um, and we'll follow up to this episode, I think, with another discussion with the other two guys that were the show with me. But for now, uh, make sure to like, subscribe, comment below. And of course, tune in next week for another episode of Fertello Talks. See you then. <laughs>